Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with the Times. I'm talking now to Shankar Krishnamurthy with Synopsis. Shankar, hello. Hello, Nitin. Good seeing you again. And good to see you too. Um, it's been a busy day for you uh, at uh, Snug and Executive Forum. That's right. Um, I think also you, you made some announcement with, um, announcements with GTC. Mm -hmm. Just tell me a little bit of an overview of everything that's gone on over the last two days. Sure, Nitin. So let me start with our GTC announcement. Uh, so. Um, We've been working very closely with NVIDIA on accelerated computing for several years, and uh, we announced uh, several advancements in our partnership. We talked about uh, using the Grace Blackwell architecture to accelerate circuit simulation by over 30x, mm. uh, the Blackwell GPU accelerating computational lithography by 20x compared to the previous generation Hopper, and we have several other capabilities that we are now uh, targeting for accelerated compute like physical verification, and TCAD and uh, materials engineering. So we really are super excited about using this uh, avenue to significantly accelerate EDA algorithms because our customers' challenges are growing, our complexity is growing, and they need the big, big uh, improvements. So, so I think your announcements uh, with GTC were extension of some of the announcements you made previously in terms of working with NVIDIA, uh, uh, the new sort of additions, is that right? That's right, that's yeah. right. And also we have exp expanded our engagement with NVIDIA also in the area of AI. Okay. So we now use the NVIDIA NIM uh, services, yeah, microservices, microservices yeah. to help accelerate our AI solutions as well. Uh, I mean, that's a good uh, sort of symbiotic relationship, isn't it? That's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. They use our tools, you know, we use their technology, so it's a very positive feedback loop that's growing from strength to strength. Now, there's been a few announcements here as well uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, tell, just summarize some of those, and then we'll talk more generally about some of the challenges. Sure, sure. I would say that, I mean, the, the key takeaways from today is that um, the complexity uh, is growing at a dramatic pace for, pro for new product uh, design and introductions of new products. Uh, at the same time, the velocity of innovation that's, that's required is accelerating significantly. We're talking about chips every 12 months and things like that. And so we are making a thesis that design teams everywhere have to re-engineer engineering, engineering yeah. re-look at their engineering workflows and look at how to completely uh, change it, evolve it in order to keep up with this pace yeah. and deal with this complexity. And to that end, uh, we are essentially, and obviously we have uh, a lot of capability in hardware-assisted verification, in modeling technology, uh, in IP, mm -hmm. uh, which of course our customers work with. And then of course on the EDA side, we have a lot of capabilities as well as uh, really we have explained our next evolution of AI, uh, which is basically called agentic AI, yeah. on top of the work we've already did before with reinforcement learning and uh, generative AI. Yeah, and that agentic AI, I think we talked to Sassine earlier, but I think he highlighted it's about AI assistance and that sort of path that's to, right. to having autopilot, auto I guess. That's right. So, uh, yeah. to autopilot. That's right. Co-pilot to autopilot. And really the way we see it is uh, we see uh, a progression of autonomy mm. going from what we call as level one, which is really the assistance, which we already have engaged with several customers on, uh, moving to agents, which now start to do specific tasks, uh, you know, more autonomously, but maybe with human orchestration. Then moving to what we call as multi-agent orchestration, that's level three moving to planning, which is level four, uh, and then full autonomy, level five. And, and it goes from uh, what we use right now, or you're, you're doing maybe L2, L3, is assistive to actually enabling creativity. So from RTL generation to, mm -hmm. to like uh, more sort of creative uh, design. Yeah, so I mean, you, you can basically think about uh, a typical chip design flow has many, many steps, right? Yeah. 30, 40, 50 steps. Yeah. And our goal really with this whole agentic AI is how do you take some of the high toil steps mm. and really more or less eliminate them by having uh, agent engineers do them mm. and really keep the bandwidth of the human engineers to do a lot of other steps which are needed to bring a design to, to reality, right? So there are, uh, so the way we are thinking about it is all the high toil steps, which are essentially things that agentic uh, AI could more or less automate, uh, can essentially be used to change the workflow, mm. so that you do you direct the human resources towards the high complexity tasks, with uh, agent engineers assisting them, versus uh, essentially having them do what are low complexity tasks, which yeah. should really be cleaned up with the uh, uh, agents. One of the things that came up in one of the panels, and we'll talk about the panels in a minute, but um, there's like 
um, AI assistants can do the parallel coding, whereas mm -hmm. humans are very good at sequential coding. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. so something that came up? Uh, yeah, so again, you know, the thing is, I mean, AI is just not just about productivity, right? Yeah. AI is as much about uh, improving results. Yeah. And to that end, uh, we are big believers that AI is going to produce new types of results mm. that haven't been seen before. Mm. And so I mean, there's both an efficiency angle and a much better result angle. Yeah, right, okay. and so there are going to be use cases like this one, where like whether it's generating much more uh, parallel code, uh, generating you know code which is easily acceleratable on a GPU, things which are not something that which may take time for a human engineer to learn and start using, and the, you know these types of uh, AI capabilities could generate it much more efficiently with the adequate okay. you know prompts and uh, the right context and so on. Now the, you, you've been involved. Uh, there's been a number of panels here at the Executive Forum which mm -hmm. we attended. Yeah, uh, from automotive to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. HBM, uh, sorry, uh, to to quantum, which is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your key takeaways uh, from some of these? I know you moderated one of those. Yeah, no, I think you know the the, the key takeaway is that the um, you know the the whole silicon to systems spectrum has to be looked at uh, as a continuum. Mm. Right? It's not enough to just look at the silicon side or just look at the system side. It's increasingly becoming a full continuum. Mm. Uh, and also, I mean, when you look at AI systems and when you look at AI clusters and the pace at which they are evolving, uh, you know, how do you help the whole ecosystem operate at a pace at which it has never operated before? Yeah. Designs every nine months, 12 months. And uh, how do you provide the right set of capabilities to this uh, whole uh, ecosystem to enable that to happen? So if you look at the evolution with HBM and the migration to custom HBM, a lot happening there. If you'd like to look at the uh, discussions we had around advanced packaging, whole new sets of capabilities are going to be needed exactly. for the type of integration we discussed in that panel. Yeah. Uh, or when you look at the discussion we had around agents and productivity recently and how workflows can can be dramatically changed with the presence of agents i mean all this essentially the underlying theme is re-engineer engineering yeah. because you if you did things the same way there's you're going to be limited in terms of how much you can do yeah. and the current requirements need us to completely rethink how many of these uh, and, and that rethink i think we were talking about it this morning is is not just about the tools or, and, and you know, the other technology, but it's about collaboration as well uh, amongst the big partners as well as the small partners. Absolutely. I mean, I think this is a, a phase we are in where, you know, uh, I mean, collaboration, uh, you know, is so, so critical, right? Because we are a customer uh, as well as a, par as, as a partner, as well as a tool provider for many of these companies yeah. because we are all in one tight uh, yeah, tightly knit ecosystem and each one is pushing the other to try to get their capabilities and also intricately, in, incredibly uh, linked with each other in order to deliver that capability, right? So that's why I think it's a very unique time yeah. and, you know, collaboration is something that is essential. Now, if I asked you, like, what's changed in, in the EDA world over the last two or three years, I think the obvious answer you're going to give me is the use of AI and, <laughs> and uh, in chip design, but also how generative AI has influenced that. But what do you see, I mean, it's the pace is going to be really fast, I think, uh, mm -hmm. given everybody's talking about yearly cadence mm -hmm. of uh, product development mm -hmm. and speeding up uh, product development even with more complexity. Mm -hmm. What do you see over the next few years? What's what's the, the next big thing? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think we heard some of those themes today. I mean, moving the chiplet-based design, yeah. multi-die, that's yeah. one of the ingredients to doing a chip per year. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to see that being broadly adopted. Yeah, and we heard about and the interconnects and, and the interconnects and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and moving to optical, yeah, CPO. Uh, yeah, exactly. CPO is another big one. Um, and I, I would say the, I mean, the, the other big part of it is um, that uh, when you look at multi-die, intricately linked with multi-die is multi-physics. Yeah. And how do you basically build those super complex packages? And how do you do the package level verification and validation? That's where the ANSYS thing comes in as well. And that's where the ANSYS thing comes in, right? I mean, yeah. this whole fusion of uh, EDA and multi-physics, uh, you know, fu you know, accelerated with accelerated compute, augmented with AI, is going to become a big, big capability in the next few years to build those types of uh, systems we talked about today. Well, Shankar, is there anything else you want to tell our audience? No, I said. Uh, I, mean, I would say that uh, I think we are in, in an incredibly exciting phase of innovation. Yeah. Uh, it requires a very, very close partnership across all the different uh, companies that are participating in this. And of course, uh, as Synopsis, we are thrilled to be uh, contributing towards uh, the progress of uh, humanity in a okay. significant way. That's uh, quite good. All right, Shankar, thank you very much. Thank you, Nitin. Thank Great you. seeing you.